For most ancient Greeks, the Trojan War was much more than just a myth. It was a defining moment in their distant past. According to Herodotus, the writer from the 5th century BC, considered the father of history, it was generally assumed to have been a real event. And while it is true that Herodotus sometimes exaggerates for effect, his accounts have consistently been found to be more or less reliable. The name Troy refers both to a place in legend and a real-life archaeological site. In legend, Troy is a city that was besieged for 10 years and eventually conquered by a Greek army led by King Agamemnon. The reason for the wars was, according to Homer's Iliad, the abduction of Helen, a queen from Sparta, by Paris, the son of Troy's king Priam. In some non-literal but deeper, hidden, or occult interpretations of the myth, Helen of Troy is linked to Lilith as the personification of death, but not in the physical context. In the mystery schools, death has a different spiritual meaning as set forth in the Zohar, for example, concerning certain interpretations of the consequences brought about by the apple in the Garden of Eden story. Throughout the Iliad, the gods constantly intervene in support of characters on both sides of the conflict. Troy also refers to a real ancient city located on the northwest coast of Turkey, which, since antiquity, has been identified by many as being the Troy discussed in legend. Whether the Trojan War actually took place and whether the site in northwest Turkey is the same Troy is still a matter of debate. According to legend, the Trojan War took place near the end of the Bronze Age, probably before 1200 BC, possibly around the time that the Mycenaean civilization flourished in Greece. According to Heinrich Schliemann, who conducted a series of excavations in modern-day Turkey in the 1870s, the city of Troy goes back at least 2,700 years, backed by treasures he discovered and claimed to be from King Priam. While there's no doubt that Schliemann did find golden artifacts, ancient swastikas, and real remnants from an ancient city in Anatolia, located where Troy was said to have once stood, it is still questionable if this was the same Troy spoken about in Greek mythology or another city built upon it centuries later. The earliest account for this war comes from Homer, who lived around the 8th century BC, several centuries after the event took place, and doesn't appear to have been written down until even later, likely during the 6th century BC. Homer's Iliad is an ancient Greek epic poem set in the 10th year of the siege against Troy. A number of key events happen in the poem, including a duel between the king of Sparta and husband of Helen against Paris, with the winner supposed to receive Helen as a prize, ending the war. However, the gods intervene to break up the duel before it's finished and the war continues. Contrary to popular belief, the Iliad does not end with the destruction of Troy, but with a temporary truce after which the fighting presumably continues. Another work attributed to Homer is the Odyssey, set after the destruction of the city, referencing how the Greeks took Troy using the famous Trojan horse, a wooden structure concealing warriors within it. The city, immortalized by Homer's poems and allegedly discovered by Heinrich Schliemann, seems to be located on an archaeological site that shows that it was inhabited going back at least 5,000 years, not to mention other nearby sites such as Gobekli Tepe that date back twice as far. After one city was destroyed, a new city would be built on top of it, creating a human-made mound called a tell. According to researchers from the University of Amsterdam, there is not one single Troy, there are at least 10 lying in layers on top of each other. So while Schliemann's 17-year-old Greek wife, Sophia, looked very impressive, adorned in all that ancient gold and treasures he discovered, 
there still remains doubt if he dug down deep enough to reach the actual Troy spoken about in myth, and not another city built upon it at a later date. The same could be said about the famous funeral mask of Agamemnon that he discovered in 1876, with no real indication it actually belonged to the Mycenaean king Agamemnon, leader of the Greeks in Homer's Iliad, despite the fact that it was made of gold and was found at the site of Mycenae. That said, let's take a closer look at the mythology from another perspective. If you study the Iliad closely, you'll discover that the shields of the leaders of the Greek armies at the siege of Troy were painted with lions or serpents, while the Trojan defenders also had lions or eagles on their shields. The Iliad also describes a huge eagle as appearing over the contending armies at the siege of Troy. What do these symbols mean? According to Josephus in his Antiquities of the Jews, the Spartan king Arios sent an embassy to the Jewish high priest acknowledging that the Jews and Spartans were racially akin, both having descended from Abraham. It's also interesting to note that the seal on the letter from Sparta showed an eagle holding a serpent, a symbol we see in other places, which I will get to in a future video. As for the Trojan lion, this is also a biblically referenced symbol we find in Genesis. So were some of the ancient Greeks and Trojans related to each other? In the Greek legends, we find that Dardanus, son of Zeus and Electra, was the founder of Dardanus in Troad, named after himself. Troad was a region in Anatolia, and according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, Dardanus became the founder of the royal house of Troy. His original home being Arcadia, which was located in the Peloponnese. Peloponnese is the region of Greece where the Spartans were from. So where did Dardanus come from? I'll get to that shortly. According to the 9th century British historian and Welsh monk Nennius, who authored the history of the Britons about the ancient history of the indigenous British folk, a group of people under the leadership of Brutus, from whom Britain took its name, invaded England some 1100 years before the time of Jesus, or over 3000 years ago and set up a dynasty of British kings. The legends and histories of the ancient world trace Brutus and his people back to Italy and through his ancestors back to ancient Troy. Keep in mind this was a time of major upheaval and earth changes in the area which affected the entire Mediterranean. Many scholars attribute this time as coinciding with what is recorded in the Bible as the time of Exodus. Hecateus of Abdera, a 4th century BC Greek historian, states that, quote, Now the Egyptians say that also after these events, a great number of colonies were spread from Egypt all over the inhabited world. They say also that those who set forth with Danis, likewise from Egypt, settled what is practically the oldest city of Greece, Argos, end quote. Some scholars leak Dardanus with Darda of the Bible, the son of Zara and grandson of Judah. The Athenians believed that they themselves were colonists from Sias in Egypt, according to Diodorus of Sicily, the ancient Greek historian and author of Bibliotheca Historica from around 60 BC. That said, according to the Egyptians, via Plato, the ancient Egyptian priests of Sias said that both Sias in Egypt and Athens of Greece were founded by the same patron goddess Athena or Neith to the Egyptians. So it becomes interesting once we make the connection between Egypt, Greece, Italy, ancient Anatolia or Troy, and Northern Europe or Britain. In my last video, we talked about the Etruscans, the civilization that predated the Roman Empire in Italy, who did not call themselves Etruscan, which comes from Etruria or Tuscana, the Roman name of their homeland. 
The Etruscans called themselves Rosanna, or Rosna, or later Rutuli, all of which come to mean red, or the red ones. We know the Etruscans depicted themselves painted red, and even with blonde hair, used red ochre to color their skin red, much like another ancient Mediterranean civilization from the island of Crete, the Minoans, which is also not what they called themselves, as Minoan comes from Minotaur, which translated means bull of Minos. That said, the Minoans, like the Etruscans, also painted their white skin with red ochre, and like the Etruscans, worshipped the goddess and revered the serpent. The ancient Egyptian pharaohs also depicted themselves as red, applying red ochre to their skin and mummies as depicted in their art along with the serpent. Which brings us to the Phoenicians, a maritime civilization of the ancient Mediterranean who are considered Canaanites and were called Phoenicians by the Greek from the Greek word phinos, meaning red. Also, in a recent video, I talked about the Vikings, Eric the Red, and I said that his name was likely due to his red beard, which may or may not have been his natural hair color, but I used some ambiguity because I didn't want to get into what I'm discussing now, which is a link between the Viking runes and the Phoenician alphabet, both of whom share similarities not only in ship design, but both adorned their vessels with serpents, as did the Etruscans, who incidentally were well-known pirates. And the word Viking itself means pirate. I also previously covered the Redskin Indians of the New World, who painted their white skin red and also used swastikas and serpent symbolism. So it seems that there was an ancient seafaring civilization from the Americas, to the Mediterranean, to Northern Europe, and other places, but I'm running out of time, who revered the goddess in their religion, which today is called pagan, as well as snakes or serpent symbology, which today is vilified as evil and are associated with the color red, which is also the color attributed to the tribe of Dan, whose unique symbol is, you guessed it, the snake. Of course, this story is much older than the Bible, as Plato said while alluding to the colors of Atlantis, and I quote from Critias, the stone which was used in the work they quarried from underneath the center island and from underneath the zones on the outer as well as the inner side. One kind was white, another black, and a third red. It's interesting that the flag of Egypt consists of these same three Atlantean colors of red, white, and black, with an eagle which in pagan times represented Zeus, the planet Jupiter, that has a 12-year orbit around the sun, which is why the zodiac on our modern calendar is based on 12, which was extended to 12 by the ancient Romans when Emperor Augustus added July for Julius Caesar and August, named after himself, the ancient Roman eagle being their emblem, the same emblem as nationalist Germany that rejected the out-of-Africa theory in favor for research into origins from Atlantis, and whose flag, which I'm not permitted to show here, used the same swastika as found in Troy or Greece and other places, and whose flag also used, you guessed it, black, white, and red. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. You can find my published books on Amazon. They make a great gift. Thank you to those who support me on Patreon. There should be a link below. Kindly share this video if you found it informative. Please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell for updates. I look forward to your thoughts in the comment section. Please have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again soon.